Hey guys, welcome to Cooking with Class. My name is Chef Gooch, and with me I have one of my favorite practicum students. My name is Lily Powers. I go to Coronado and I'm a senior. All right, Lily uh, is gonna be helping me out today. She is in her second year of my practicum, which is a work release program, and she works at one of my favorite uh, restaurants here in town, that's Cap Rock Cafe. She's also captain of the soccer team at Coronado. Uh, we're gonna be making some ice cream sandwiches. I've made ice cream sandwiches on the show before. All of my students in class are also working on some ice cream sandwiches. We might get to see some of those. Uh, we're gonna mix it up a little today. Um, I like to take a different dessert and kind of like transform it. So we're going to be working with carrot cake today uh, and making an ice cream sandwich or an ice cream cake. Uh, we're going to make a carrot cake and then cream cheese ice cream instead of uh, the cream cheese frosting that's on a carrot cake. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of people have asked about my cake recipe. Uh, so I've got my modified box cake recipe right here for you. And so. Let's get started with that, Lily. Uh, first thing you need is a box of cake mix. So this is a really easy recipe. Um, you just take box cake mix and you kind of modify it. It makes a really strong structure. It's really good for tiered cakes. I use it for wedding cakes and stuff. And then um, it's gonna work out really well here today as well. So then to that, we're gonna add one cup of flour, one cup of sugar, we've got a cup of milk. You can use any liquid that's going to help flavor your cake, but my go-tos are always just milk and then sour cream for the fat. So you can use, uh, you just need a cup of each. Perfect. And then three eggs. Nice. Um, and then we need a, uh, like two teaspoons of salt. I'll just do a couple pinches of salt here. You can add a little bit of flavoring, some vanilla. We're just going to add a little, uh, about a half teaspoon of vanilla paste. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, and then the last thing we're going to add is some carrots. So let's peel those. You know what? How about I peel them and then you can shred them. So we've got about four carrots here. Um, the other aspect of a uh, carrot cake, there's always nuts, usually walnuts. Um, but we live in Texas, I love pecans. So we're gonna make a pecan sauce to go with our ice cream sandwich. Should be pretty good. Let me show you real quick. You can just take it and go kind of go at an angle like this. And you will have longer pieces yeah. and it'll be good. Perfect. So yeah, we're gonna make a pecan cream sauce to go with this sandwich. It's gonna be pretty good. Well, this cake is super easy. It bakes at a very low temperature. And the reason for that, we want the inside of the cake to come up to temperature. That way it doesn't sink. It's especially important when you're using um, like a deeper cake pan. So we bake it at around 300 degrees. Today we're gonna be baking it on some sheet pans. And so I wanted to talk about some of our vocabulary here. Um, this really big pan is called a full sheet pan. And this will not fit in most of your home ovens. This is just for restaurants and professionals to use. So if you see these out there, I wouldn't buy one unless you know for sure it's gonna fit. Then this next one, it's half as big. We call it a half sheet or a half sheet pan. This is your standard one that you buy that you use at home. Sometimes we call it a cookie sheet, but yeah, a half size or a half sheet pan. And then this one is half as big again. These are quarter sheets. And so we're gonna be baking on these quarter sheets today. Um, this recipe will make two that are kind of fat or three that are a little bit thinner. We only need two though, so it's kind of up to you how you, uh, how you do that. Um, if you do two, I took a knife, and um, if it puffs up too much, you can kind of trim it out so that it's nice and level using this pan. Um, so we'll go over that in just a sec. Oh, I missed a carrot, I'm sorry. Okay, nice. Yeah, so I had four carrots. They were kind of medium size. If you had some bigger ones, we're looking for a little more than a cup. That's probably about one to one and a half cups of shredded carrot. That's all just going straight in. Um, we're gonna mix this on low speed for about three minutes and then high speed for three minutes. And then we'll prep our pans and get it in the oven. So 
a little hard to get on there when I'm looking at it backwards. So low speed, three minutes. All right, our three minutes is up. We're gonna take, uh, do we have a rubber spatula? Give me that rubber spatula. Just gonna scrape the bottom of the bowl, make sure there's nothing dry on the bottom, anywhere in there. While she does that, I'll prep our pans. I've got some parchment cut to fit the bottom. I'm still gonna spray the sides especially. We don't need to flour it or anything. Um, All right, well, go ahead. Let's dump uh, a good chunk on each one of those. It's a good start right there. Yeah, that's solid. Woo. We've got a little bit left over in here. Um, I want to see what this looks like. You can probably use that, bake up a couple of cupcakes for the chef to eat, whatever you want to do there. This cake rises a lot. That's perfect. Yeah, just like that. And then you can scrape that on the side. Yeah, there you go. And uh, because we do this at such a low temp, it will even out really well. It's not gonna keep these like little edges. It'll kind of melt down, even out, and then it's gonna rise up. Perfect. All right, so uh, I did want to point out, one thing I forgot to mention, the cake mix we were using was carrot cake mix, just a box of carrot cake mix. But that's what's so awesome about this modified box cake recipe is any kind of box cake will work. You can just kind of adjust it. We could have used like a yellow or a white cake if that's what we had lying around and then added the carrots and the different spices like cinnamon and stuff and just kind of made it into our own thing. Um, I like the, to use the sour cream and milk because um, it replicates that like really moist cake uh, that you see in a lot of southern cakes like Italian cream cake or German chocolate um, and carrot cake so or even red velvet those all use buttermilk or sour cream to get that really nice flavor and to add that richness we're going to pop these in a really low oven and then we're going to make some ice cream let's go all right our cake is in the oven so it's time to make our ice cream now I've got behind me the recipe for just basic ice cream. Um, you're gonna need four ounces of just egg yolks. And if you don't have a scale, uh, that's roughly six egg yolks. That should be fine, just six. And then I've also got six ounces of sugar right here. We've got 16 ounces of milk or two cups. Uh, the recipe calls for eight ounces of heavy cream. We're gonna modify this recipe. We're making a cream cheese ice cream. So I'm replacing um, the eight ounces of heavy cream with just an eight ounce block of cream cheese. Because we need, still need that fat in order to give the ice cream the right mouthfeel. And then for flavor, we've got half a teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of vanilla. Um, we are going to replace that vanilla with the juice of one lemon. Uh, this lemon can definitely uh, curdle our milk. So we actually add it at the very end once we've made it into a custard. So ice cream starts off as a stovetop custard, really easy to make. Um, let's start by scalding this milk. Our pan isn't too hot, is it? That's fine. It might sizzle a little bit. I've just got it on high heat and we're just gonna heat that up until the milk almost boils over. If it boils over, it kind of scorches it, changes the flavor. And then we're gonna mix our salt and sugar. Lily's gonna whisk that up. Uh, I said salt and sugar. Salt, sugar, and egg yolks. Said half a teaspoon. Boom. And you don't want to mix this up too early. Sometimes sugar sitting on the egg yolks, it can kind of cook them. Uh, and you either need a towel or a partner to work on this part. So we're going to be pouring this hot milk into the egg mixture. Oh, we got some of our students to finish their ice cream sandwich. We're going over here. Let's see. Oh, nice. Okay, we've got uh, like a kind of like a strawberry shortcake yes. looking. Okay, you guys did yellow cake. Mm -hmm. 
And then what's in your ice cream? The infusion is the ice cream in the milk and then we have chocolate crumbles inside. Okay, so we took, you guys baked some cake, mm -hmm. you soaked the ice cream in the cake and then pulled it out to flavor the ice cream like cake. Yes. And then you put some chocolate covered cream. That looks awesome, guys. It looks really good. Can't wait to try it. Take a picture for me, all right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So what we're going to do, I'll let you whisk. Okay. Now you got the milk. It doesn't really matter. Okay, let's set this right here. Yeah, start whisking. So if you're working solo, you can take a towel that's kind of damp. And you can kind of do this and like wrap it around for the bowl to sit in so it won't move. But it's a lot easier just to have a friend nearby. And this is called tempering. We're just, keep going, keep going fast. We're just slowly raising the temperature of the eggs. If we were to add really hot milk, it's gonna scramble those eggs and we don't want that. The yolks are the, did I burn you? Good. The yolks are the only um, thickening agent in this ice cream. So we just add a little bit at a time. We pretty much raised the temperature enough. Right there is fine, that's good. So now we're gonna switch from the whisk to a, a really good rubber spatula. This is a heat proof rubber spatula. Scrape all of this back in here, back on high heat. And so we're gonna thicken this until it coats the back of a spoon. And in French, uh, that term is called a la nappe but we'll be able to run our finger through the back of our rubber spatula and the ice cream shouldn't just like run through like water. It should get nice and thick. It's very easy to burn this. So we're gonna be stirring the whole time. And what I like to do, let me show you real quick, Lily. I take like I'm rowing a boat because it makes it easier to feel when it starts to thicken. And I'm just scraping the bottom of the pot and using the corner of my spatula to get around the corners, just making sure that nothing is gonna stick, it's not gonna burn. Um, we definitely don't want it to boil. So it's still on high heat, but we're just gonna watch it like a hawk. Looks like I've got a couple more ice cream sandwiches ready. Come on over guys, let's see. Oh wow, all right. It's a lot of chocolate sauce, I like it. Um, what did you guys do for your ice cream? Uh, our ice cream is a thin mint infusion with a Oreo cookie inclusion. Okay. And the... Uh, the sandwich part is sandwich brownie? Is brownie, yeah. And then a chocolate sauce, so I mean, that is a lot of chocolate. Um, I would love that, looks good. So we did, you use thin mint cookies and infuse that into yeah. the ice cream, into the milk. Yeah. Strained it out, made ice cream the same way we're making it. That looks awesome, guys, good job. I like it, thanks. Thank yeah, if you can't tell, the theme for this lab has been an infusion. So all of my students had to pick from some different ingredients and then they infuse the milk. We use cereal, cookies, crackers, all kinds of things. Um, infuse into the milk, pull that out. I'm cheating, I'm not doing that. We're just making cream cheese. <laughs> I do have a good thermometer. Um, so another thing we can look for is the temperature of our custard. If it gets above 185 degrees, um, it'll curdle. Those eggs um, just kind of cook, they seize up. And so one thing we're gonna do to stop the cooking process, I've got a bowl of ice water and that's what my uh, cream cheese is sitting in. And so the cream cheese is also really cold. Uh, if you had heavy cream, it would work even better. It would just really chill it and stop that cooking process right away. Uh, we're gonna blend this up with this immersion blender once we add it. Okay, you can stop. Now, let's see, let's see. Yeah. It's got nice and thick. Could you feel how it got thicker as you're like, kind of like rowing a boat is what I like to say. Um, and as we move it around, it's not splashing like water. So we can take our spatula. You can run your finger through. You see how that streak just kind of stays there. And that's what we were talking about that nappe. Looks like it could go just like a fraction longer. I'm gonna leave that heat on just a fraction longer. While you do that, I'll get this um, plugged in. And then as soon as it gets thick, just pour it right on top of that cream cheese. Go ahead, pour it right in there. And I do have a strainer, so if you, if you overcook it like a little bit and you have a couple little bits of egg, you can pass it through a, a fine mesh sieve or some sort of strainer, um, but ours looked all right. 
me get this pot out of the way. And then if you want, we're just gonna blend this on high. Okay. It's gonna start melting that cream cheese. Um, you could use a stand-up blender as well. Just be careful with hot liquids because it'll force the lid off. All right, hit that high button right there. And it's gonna take a little bit of moving it around. Yeah, just don't burn yourself. Here, let me show you a trick. So what we'll do is we'll take and just start on the side and it'll pull the, the cream cheese over as it, um, it'll pull that cream cheese into the mixture if we just blend from right here. That's fine. Made a little bit of a mess, it's all right. It has stopped the cooking. It's done a good job there. So I'm gonna pull that off. Yeah, see now it's gotten really soft. There it goes. Go ahead. So while she's finishing up blending it, I'm gonna go ahead and juice this lemon. That lemon juice is really gonna elevate this and make it taste like that um, really good kind of tart cream cheese frosting that you're used to on a carrot cake. Perfect, you can stop there. We will give it just a little, uh, I think we'll just do a real quick strain back into this pot. Make sure we don't have any lumps. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And then, and it smells great too. Grab a couple spoons, let's give this a taste and we'll get it into the ice cream maker. Tell me what you think. Spot on. Tastes like cream cheese frosting. All right, let me get my big ice cream mixer situated over here, and then we'll get this started. All right, uh, I've got my ice cream mixer set up, so we're gonna get this in there uh, and get it churned. I got one more, a couple more ice cream sandwiches. Oh, three more ice cream sandwiches. Bring them over, guys. Come on, throw them down, let's see. So tell me what you got, Naraya. You do kind of like a pie crust, right? Yeah. Yeah, with graham cracker crumbs. What's your ice cream? It's cinnamon and strawberry. Cinnamon and strawberry. And then you guys made kind of like a strawberry whipped cream, strawberry cream cheese and whipped cream, strawberry chantilly icing on top. That looks really nice. I like it. Good job. How does it taste? Have you tasted it? It was really good. Good? Awesome. What you got, Trinity? Y'all made two different, oh, okay. Two different sizes. Nice, okay, so y'all did um, some meringue cookies, yeah. right? So we, you made a meringue, you baked it, and then what is your ice cream? Pineapple. Pineapple ice cream, pineapple and, and then pineapple and coconut, and then we also have chocolate. Milk for coconut milk, so we have That's right, yeah, you use coconut milk. Okay, looks good, I like it. It's big, good luck eating that. All right, let's get our ice cream in the mixer. Uh, I got a big fancy one. This one um, doesn't require any ice or salt or anything like that. Um, we just lock that lid on, we hit start. And then it says 45 minutes, but it doesn't take nearly that long um, because I've been turning ice cream all day. All right, uh, let's talk about the sauce for our carrot cake. So I didn't put any nuts in the carrot cake. Sometimes you'll see walnuts, sometimes you'll see pecans. Um, we're gonna make a pecan cream sauce. So this is a recipe um, that I'm a big fan of. You can do this with a lot of different tree nuts um, and kind of make this creamy sauce. Uh, sometimes people who are vegan uh, use a nut cream sauce like this as a replacement for other things, but I think it's just good by itself. And so we took some pecans, we uh, let them sit on some warm water for about two hours. And now what we're gonna do is just blend that up. So, uh, Lily, get over here, let's blend that up. Let's grab a towel, cover that. Anytime you're blending like a hot liquid, you wanna be really careful, you wanna have a vent. So I've taken out the center of this lid um, because it will build up steam and the pressure can sometimes blow the lid off. This is an industrial blender and this lid fits really tight. And that probably won't happen, but I just want to be safe. 
Um, some of the home blenders, they have like a small plastic lid. This one is like um, rubber and it fits really well as like a stopper. But uh, we're gonna hold the towel over it and just be safe. Go ahead, Lily. Okay, keep going. Okay, stop right there. So I didn't know how much liquid it would take. That's real thick and chunky. We're gonna add a little maple syrup to sweeten it. Or a lot. And then a little more water just until we get the right consistency that we're looking for. Go ahead. Stop right there. Looks like it's still pretty chunky. More water. And then I'm gonna add a little touch of salt as well. Okay. That looks good. Stop there. That all of a sudden it's like, I can see that's a really good consistency. Especially once it cools off a little bit, that's gonna plate up nice. Grab a plate real quick and we'll just kind of see what it looks like on a plate. And see if it's gonna spread out. Oh yeah, that's perfect, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be great. That's a really good consistency. You wanna taste it? Yeah, that's good. That's pretty good, right? So that's gonna add that um, pecan flavor that we're looking for um, back into our ice cream sandwich. Thought I had somebody bringing me another one. Bring it over here, Tavion. Let's take a look. All right, what'd you guys make? We made a Reese's brownie. A Reese's brownie? With, uh, it's a, a ice cream and then the base is soaked in pop cereal. Okay, yeah, y'all use some corn pop cereal yeah. for your infusion on the milk. And then inside it's Reese's and bananas. That's a lot, but all those things work together so well. Also, I wanna give you guys props. You froze your plate. So like when you work in a restaurant, a lot of times if you're serving a cold dessert, we would keep plates in the freezer, pull them out and put them on there. So that's good. And you guys made some caramel from scratch. Awesome. Well, that looks great. And have you tasted it? Not all together. Not all together? No, because the ice cream was really good. The ice cream was really good. How was the brownie? It was all right. It was all right. Very chocolatey. Yeah, it's gonna be, but well, I think it'll work out. Good job, guys. All right, now we just gotta wait for our cake to bake. Why don't you go grab that cake? Take a look at it. And our ice cream to finish churning and then we're gonna assemble. All right, so Lily has pulled our cakes out of the oven. Uh, you know, we test it by pressing and then if it springs back, you can use a toothpick. You can also look at the edge and see how it's pulled away some. Those are all really good signs. Uh, we know the bottom has parchment, it's not gonna stick. So we're gonna, Lily's gonna take um, a little spatula, <laughs> a really little spatula. Just go around the edge, make sure they're loose. Our ice cream is nice and thick. It's almost perfect. So we're good there. I'm gonna grab some plastic wrap. Before we put it in here, we're gonna line this with a really big piece of plastic wrap. Uh, if you don't have anything this big, which you probably don't at home, um, just use multiple pieces. We're gonna get it down into the cracks and crevices. Okay, so that's ready. Just like a casserole dish, like a nine by 13 is fine. This is a, a little long, so we might actually just trim off a little bit once we pull it out. So yeah, go ahead, just flip it over. Flip it over, is it coming out? And yeah, just leave it on there. Yeah, give it a good tap. Perfect. Let's trim off um, just a little bit with that knife right there, maybe like one inch. So we want this flat part to be on the bottom so that it's nice and flat on the bottom and it's nice and flat on the top. Uh, let's do this. Let's peel this off. Let's put it um, back in here upside down like that. Peel it off. And when you're handling a cake that's kind of thin like this, if we pick it up wrong, it's just going to crack. Honestly, it can crack and it's gonna be fine because we're gonna freeze it, but back in there, now we can flop it over. Go ahead, just, just do it. Look at that, perfect. Oh, and we cut it perfect as well. So that's in there now. 
Uh, we're gonna make sure that our plastic wrap is kind of pulled up on the sides. We're gonna pour our ice cream in. Super easy. So right now this ice cream is really soft. It's like soft serve, right? And so it has to freeze to kind of solidify. So we're gonna take, we're just gonna throw it on here. And then uh, while I do this, you wanna pop that one out. And that one's gonna be easier. Um, we can leave the uh, parchment on the bottom and that'll help, we'll pick it up and put it on here and then peel the parchment off. Go ahead and trim off just a little bit, just like we did the other one. I'm just gonna just barely move it over to the edge. It doesn't need to be like super, don't try and get all OCD with this part. That's fine right there, okay? Let's do this together. Can you get under that side? And then bloop. I'm not gonna press down or anything. I'm just gonna cover it with my plastic wrap, maybe another sheet. And we're gonna pop this in the freezer, preferably overnight. Eight hours is fine if you, for some reason, are waking and making ice cream cake but, uh, or ice cream sandwiches. But we're gonna pop this in the freezer for overnight. I've got one that we made yesterday and we'll be right back. All right, so here's a cake that we assembled yesterday and it's already frozen overnight. Um, you don't want to jump the gun on this. You got to prep it a little bit in advance. Um, so the one we just finished putting together, that one's going to be um, just a fun treat for tomorrow. Um, but this one, we put that plastic wrap in this pan so we can pull it out. It'll make it a lot easier to pop this out. Oh, that's just coming right out. Uh, if you're having trouble, you could run a little hot water uh, if your ice cream like froze to the side or anything. Yeah. Can honestly just kind of now some of our ice cream got pushed out to the sides because it's not a perfect fit and that's okay if you want it to look really nice um, what we can do is you can trim it up first we're gonna trim the edges off and those are just your little treats to eat and then we're gonna cut some really nice uh, looking bars to make our sandwich and plate it up yeah use both hands there you go line it up don't cut my fingers off. I trust you. Hold it steady. Put this hand solid on that cake. It's okay. We washed our hands. We're good. Yeah. Now, you did a really good job, and you didn't even do what uh, I meant to tell you, which one thing that will help with this knife, because it's long enough, you can actually make a mark once you get it lined up, and then you can follow your line, okay? So do that again. All right guys, so we've got it all trimmed up. I've got a really handy um, measuring device here for our cuts and all kinds of stuff for using in the kitchen, but it does have a ruler on it. So I think um, I wanna go, let's go like two inches is good. So we're gonna mark two inches right here. Whoop. And then we'll go two inches right here. Um, and then I would also cut it this direction as well. How wide was this? It was about seven and a half, so we'll go three and three quarters. Let's get it plated. So just a big swoosh. You like that? Is that all good? Yeah. All right, go ahead and plate that up, Lily. Yeah, let's get this out of the way. And I'll let you bring that plate a little closer to you. Do you want to put it on top? Uh, I think something just like that right there. What do you think? How's that look? Should we take a bite really quick? Yeah. And dip it? Go ahead, use your spoon that you got. Let's see, dig in. Let's go. Maybe. This is not one that I can pick up and eat with my hands. That's really good. That carrot cake is great. You said it best, that cream cheese um, ice cream is like very cream cheese. Cream the pecan adds so much. This is awesome, high five. Hey guys, thanks for joining us and thanks for gorging with Gooch. And Lily. <laughs>